everyone this is Shraddha welcome back to my channel today I have had the honor to talk to the New York Times and USA to the best-selling author Brenda Hyatt I had a wonderful time talking to her and I'll be sharing our conversation with you guys so before you continue watching this video do not forget to like share and subscribe also I won't keep you any longer because I know all the starstruck fans are gonna have my head if I keep you any longer <laughs> please continue watching please welcome the New York Times and USA Today best-selling author Brenda Hyatt hello Brenda I'm truly honored to have you here tonight it's really a pleasure. I really can't express how happy and ecstatic I feel at the moment. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm really happy you reached out to me because I, I, I enjoy these things. I, I did a, a book club, um, oh, I guess it was made three or four months ago. Uh, it's a Goodreads group and it's, it's a lot of girls based in India and, um, and the, the leader of the group, um, Srujan is her name, um, reached out to me and it was a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm much more comfortable doing these sorts of things than I used to be. <laughs> it's fun, it's fun actually. And I guess readers enjoy it too because they get to interact with their favorite authors and all. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with the questions. I have a whole lot of them here. Okay. okay. What inspired you to start writing? Um. I always sort of told stories even as a kid to my friends, you know, things to make them laugh or to scare them or whatever. I didn't always say right up front that I was making it up. So, so <laughs> I sometimes tried to convince them it was true, whatever I was telling them, things like that. Um, so I, I've always done that, but it wasn't until I, it, I didn't, you know, plan to be a writer when I went to college or anything. I was planning to be a veterinarian actually. Um, but. <laughs> And I didn't start writing until um, I was well out of college and, and, you know, decided to just play around with some story ideas I had in my head. Um, Who's your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Probably the cat. I used to, I used to pretend I had an invisible black panther. So when I was, <laughs> when I was little. <laughs> All right. And dolphins. I'm also yeah. rather obsessed with dolphins, I have to say. So, <laughs> cats and dolphins. Like, dogs are quite messy. What about cats and dolphins? I really like, when it comes to pets, I'm not a big person, but my sister is literally obsessed. She is crazy about animals and pets and everything. Okay. So, when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? Um... Not, like I said, not until I started doing the, um, playing around with story ideas in my head. I had my first computer, which I don't think I would have tried, but without that, because I was a terrible typist, and the idea of having to, to correct and retype and stuff, I didn't want to do that. So it wasn't until I had a computer that I was willing to really try to write anything other than a really short story. <laughs> oh. And then I, I didn't know even then if I was going to be a writer, but I thought I would just try writing and see if I liked it and then later see if anybody was interested in buying anything I wrote. Their books are literally amazing. I actually, I read a starstruck and the chapters, even the chapters are so interesting. And while I was going through the contents, each and every chapter had an astronomical reference. And I was like, yes, I gotta read this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get your information or ideas for your books? Oh, I mean, it's different for every book. I got one of my, my early um, Regency romances I wrote. Um, I got the idea for a book from just one line from a song I heard on the radio. And I <laughs> put that into a whole book. So. <laughs> um, for Starstruck, the actual idea for that series and that book came from something I remembered after I'd already written a lot of books. I, I suddenly remembered something that had happened back when I was in elementary school, and there was a girl in my class who actually told everybody she was a Martian princess. Oh, my and, God. 
She would not be budged from that story for, it seemed like a long time. It was probably a couple of weeks. I don't know. But, you know, we kept trying to, to trick her into admitting she was making it up and she wouldn't. So, and I, I mean, I forgot all about this. This was like, you know, back in second, third grade, something like that. And then, but later I remembered that. And, and because I was a writer then and always looking for ideas, I suddenly thought, what if she was telling the truth? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that pretty much turned into Starstruck. <laughs> Who was amazing? What if she was really a Martian princess? Well, yeah. Lucky, lucky. <laughs> yeah. What is your work schedule like when you're writing? Um, well, I write on a treadmill, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> I considered doing this interview on my treadmill and decided not to because it makes some noise and I would be bouncing up and down a little bit. But I actually write while walking very slowly on a treadmill. And I've got writing music that I always play. And I've got a whole playlist that I do for, for when I'm writing Starstruck books. And I've got a whole different playlist when I'm writing historical romance. So <laughs> um, the one for Starstruck is very heavy on the band Muse. They, they have a lot of stuff that, that just seems to fit for the feel that I'm going for. And they also, a lot of them have like interstellar type themes to them and stuff. So it fits well. So that's if you do our next interview on a treadmill. It's nice yeah. idea. Yes. <laughs> Sitting all day was really starting to hurt me. I was hurting my back and my and my hips and stuff. So I first started standing at my desk, and then I I heard somebody posted something online about a, a, a walking desk with a treadmill. I was like, oh, I want that. So I did a little research and ended up. And I've been doing it. I, gee, a lot of years now, probably eight or nine years, something. I've been doing that now. That's a lot of time. Okay. Do you remember the first story you ever read and the impact it had on you? Probably the first story I think I read myself, you know, um, when I was in, I don't know, second, third grade. I don't know. Our teacher was reading it aloud to us in class and I, I didn't want to wait. She was doing like a chapter a day and I didn't want to wait to find out what happened. So I got it out of the library and read it myself. And that was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. And... Mm -hmm. uh, and and that yeah and that that's kind of what got me started is becoming a, a voracious reader from a very early age it's really early and that's super cool yeah. okay so what was your favorite book when you were a kid I um, think that was certainly one of them um that was definitely the the narnia series was definitely favorites of mine i also used to check out any book about animals, involving animals, I could find in the school library. I always loved stories, you know, all the Black Stallion books and, and you know, books about cat, you know, cats and dogs were largely featured and horses. So I, I read a lot of those type things. And of course, have my taste. Have you heard of animal stories by Ruskin Bond? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, it's all about animals. Everything in it is animals. I should probably find those. <laughs> <laughs> okay so what do you think makes a good story oh i think it starts with good characters you know just like very real feeling characters interesting characters that are s thrust into a, a challenging interesting situation and then that you know and usually there are challenges they have to overcome they need to want something and overcome challenges to to get to whatever it is that they want and i think without those elements it's hard to put together a good story really true true okay so which of your books were the most enjoyable to write oh let's see maybe starfall the fourth book, because I originally envisioned Starstruck as just those first four books. I really thought it was going to be three books, but but the third book was getting so, so long, I realized there was no way I could wrap the story up in one book without making it just way too big. So it ended up being four books. But, um, but Starfall, because... I always my favorite part of writing any book is toward the end when all the pieces start coming together. And I tend to write faster then, and it's more exciting because every all the setup is done, and and now everything's starting to fall into place. And pretty much all of Starfall was sort of like that for the series because all the things I had set up in the first three books started coming together in that one. And I 
I wrote that one faster, definitely, than any of the other Starstruck books, unless you count the novella. But, um, but yeah, that because it was like writing the end of the book almost for the whole book. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to to finally do my, my big happy ever after and, and things like that. Huh? So you like happy endings? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, every single book I've ever written has a happy ending. So I, 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 take it, I can't you know, not do happy endings. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it you are not a big fan of Wuthering Heights, considering it had a very dark and sad ending. I love Jane Eyre. Don't not a fan of Wuthering Heights. <laughs> I've read it. I've read it a couple of times. And like I read it when I was fairly young and then I gave it another try later. Like, oh well, maybe, you know, it's been a lot of years. Maybe now I'll like it. It's like, nope, 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 nope. Nope. Don't like these people. Don't want to spend time with these people in my head. <laughs> okay, it doesn't make me sad that I like what we like. I, you know, I, I get that. And I know a lot of people like uh, I put a lot of angst in my books, but I always have my characters get through the angst to their happy ending by the end. So, um, I mean, I do maybe some have tearjerker moments in a book, but I generally am not going to leave you in tears unless they're happy tears at the end of a book. I, that's my choice as a reader. I don't like to read sad books. I don't like books with depressing endings. So I don't write them either. <laughs> I don't like books. I don't like books. <laughs> All right. So, do you have a favorite character that you have written? And if so, who is it? And what makes them so special? Probably am Marsha from Starstruck because mm -hmm. I think I probably put more of myself into her than I have any character I've ever written. There's a lot of my teenage self in her, especially in the first book before she starts to come into her own you know, um, before she found out anything about herself. I was, I was a lot like that as a teenager. I was kind of a loser and didn't have very many friends. And I was a kind of a, a nerd. I was, I was, I was into astronomy and, and other things that, that weren't cool back then. Um, nobody ever would have called me cool as a teenager ever. <laughs> Cause That's I wasn't. Something. Yeah. As a teenager, I was able to relate to the character very, very much. I loved it. Yeah. And I was like, you know, she's a perfect blend of nerd, of strongness, from strength, everything. She's just perfect. Yeah, she is sort of what I would have loved to have become as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> she's, you know, idealizing. I'm idealizing her. Yeah. But apparently no one can be M. Well, she's so amazing. All right. So in your book, Starstruck, you have given astronomical name to all the chapters. Does it mean that you like astronomy? Well, yeah, yeah I was very into it as a kid. And um, even in high school, my, um, my high school actually had a planetarium, which was unusual um, <laughs> for a high school to have its own planetarium. And other schools would do field trips to our school for the planetarium. Um, and it was the one place in the school that was air conditioned, I remember. So on hot days, teachers would, you know, try and schedule things in the planetarium. <laughs> I just love that, learning about the constellations. And, and it was that that got me early on very interested in astronomy. Yeah. What's your favorite part in astronomy? The stars, the planets or the constellations, something like that? Oh, I, the, the planets are fascinating. I mean, as a kid, I mostly really got into the constellations, but as I got older and, and study actually looked into it more, the planets are, are more fascinating to me because the, there are so many mysteries there, so much we still don't know. Um, and that's, I'm always wanting to find stuff out. So, <laughs> so I find, I find the whole concept of, of other planets really fascinating it is fascinating you can just get lost in that world and you know you won't even realize you were getting lost enough all right so you write both historical and science fiction which of the two is more enjoyable to write well for for a lot of years all i wrote was the historical um fiction and historical romance um and it wasn't until I got kind of burned out. I was writing for, for big publishers back then. And I had wrote several, I had to write, the last few books I wrote for um, Avon, HarperCollins, I had to write to fairly tight deadlines. And 
Um, and I had a new editor and we didn't agree on the direction of my stories much. And it was getting very stressful. And I, I got burned out and didn't write at all for, I don't know, a year or two after my last historical romance with them. And while I was not writing, I was reading. And the things I was enjoying the most were, were young adult books, teen books. I read like the Harry Potter books and the Twilight books and, and the Hunger Games and things. And I, I finally, I, I had been teaching writing classes for, for a few years. And I always told writing students that you should write what you enjoy reading. You know, when they were saying, you know, what, what genre should I write? I said, write what you enjoy reading. And I, it, I was like, I should take my own advice. I'm really enjoying these books. I should try my hand at writing teen fiction. And that's when you know, that idea for Starstruck had been kind of in the back of my mind. So that was my first foray into teen fiction. And, um, and I was always into science fiction, too. I, I read a lot of science fiction also. And um, so I would say now I enjoy those the best. I'm enjoying the science fiction starstruck books most as a writer, though I still have written some, I have gone back and written a few more historical romances since then. As a reader, I read your book, Starstruck first. That was the first sci I've ever read. And after reading that, I got interested in science fiction. It's totally different for me. I never read Divergent or Hunger Games. First I read Starstruck, then I moved on to those books. Divergent is having a Saturday night. Well, that's I'm, I'm honored to have been your 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 gateway drug into these books. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my pleasure and my honor, Julie. I'm so glad it was you. All right. <laughs> what are your favorite novels? Oh, there's so many. Um, my probably the ones I've I've gone back to and read over and over the most are um, Pride and Prejudice. You know, Jane Austen books, but especially Pride and Prejudice. And um, the Harry Potter books, I've read those many times now. And um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings trilogy, I've read those multiple times. I can practically quote them. Um, those are the ones I always, I, I always have a few books on the go. And I think that might be your next question is what I'm, I'm reading now. And I usually have a few books on the go. I've got usually something nonfiction that I'm reading, often a, a writing or marketing type thing, and then some new piece of, fi you know, new fiction. But I've learned not to read new fiction in bed because then I stay up half the night. So I've got my, my bedside reading, which is always rereading old favorites. And those that's always things like Lord of the Rings or, or you know, Jane Austen and, and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, Jane Austen, like, she's literally a legend. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think I really wish we could talk to her and, you know, get to know her views about her characters. Well, she's the main reason I think I started writing historical romance way back in the day. So it was, was because I absolutely loved, you know, her books. She's amazing. Okay. So you already answered what you're currently reading. Yeah. <laughs> so on to the next one. Who is the author you most admire in your genre? In my genre? Um... Well, for in the teen genre, I'd have to say um, J.K. Rowling because the Harry Potter books are just so, the world building is amazing. I also thought that about the Hunger Games, that the world building was amazing. Those books are a little darker than I usually go for, but I really enjoyed them. But um, but they're kind of on the dark side for me. And um, <laughs> And same thing, like Divergent, I read the first book, and then I heard that I, I, you know, saw reviews and things that the books kept getting darker after that. I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to stop. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> nice in the end, how can they be and dark? I'm like, you know what? I'm just not going to keep up with this now. I And I think when after I read Divergent, just as a palate cleanser, I read The Princess Diaries because I wanted something really light and fluffy and fun after that. <laughs> I have watched The Princess Diaries, not read it, sadly. All right. So if you had to describe yourself in three words, what would they be? Um, let's see. I'd probably say introspective because I, I am kind of, I spend a lot of time in my head. Um, but I'm also very curious. I'm always wanting to find out about things. I, I 
I, I have a tendency to get lost on the research side of things and it slows down my writing because I go down little research rabbit holes. I look up one thing and that leads to something else that leads to something else. I'm very curious. I'm also very, um, I'm easily bored. I, I always need something going on. Like I never go any place I might have to wait without something to read. I mean, I, <laughs> just staring into space is just such a, a boring thing to me. So these guys are, my family's texting me, sorry. And I can't turn them off without turning my sound off. And then you wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to hear you. <laughs> sorry, all right. All right. Um, but I guess those are my three words. <laughs> Even I get easily bored, so I need huge, huge changes. <laughs> you know, always some sort of a change in food, in books, in everything I do. Yeah. Okay, so my last question. Any message you would like to give to your readers? Oh, well, something, um, because this is probably going to be mostly my starstruck readers more than my historical ones. Um, I don't know if you've seen anything I've put online about it, but um, I've, there's a starstruck musical. I watched it. I watched it just before yesterday. I am so excited about this. Um, my, my, my daughter, who is a professional singer and actress and narrator, she actually narrates my audiobooks. Um, she, it, she had the idea to make Starstruck into a musical. And she has a lot of music, musician type friends. And she and a composer friend got together and and wrote this musical it took them oh probably a year and a half or so to to really get the whole thing down but you know all the songs and then polish them and everything and yeah now she finally just yesterday put the last song the finale up on on youtube so now all of the music is up on youtube it's never been actually produced on stage yet because covid um but i'm i'm excited to see it sometime actually staged and uh, I think, wouldn't it make a great Bollywood musical? Yeah, it would. But I'm not <laughs> These days I'm only watching Hollywood, but not Bollywood. <laughs> but yeah, it would be a blast if it gets released in India. You can actually do that. If you ever visit India, we could, you know, plan the whole thing up and do that. It will be fun. It's not like I know anybody in that industry, but... <laughs> Oh, we can always get in touch, you know. Well, my son-in-law, my son-in-law, whose parents are from India, said that his he's got an uncle who had who at least used to have connections with Bollywood. So who knows? <laughs> but you could always try. Uh, actually, all the readers will be thrilled. And for one, I always want some water to visit India. You know, I really want you to visit. If you ever do that, please, please, please do visit Delhi. We're gonna have a whole book signing. <laughs> I would. I would. I would reach out to my readers in advance because I do seem to have a lot of of uh, teenage fans in India. Um, I, I get emails and messages on you know on Instagram and things like that. So, um, but I would absolutely let them all know if I get a chance. I would love to because you know, like I said, my son-in-law's family. Um, he still has a lot of family there. I mean, his parents are are in the United States and and have been for a long time. He was born here, but. Um, but they still have a lot of extended family in India. My daughter's been uh, to India with them, but uh, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but you should try that. Okay, Brenda, I'm really, really, really honored to have you tonight. It was really a pleasure. I was so thrilled that throughout the day I've been jumping from joy. I was so <laughs> excited. I've so been kind of nervous. I always get nervous before these sorts of things. because <laughs> The first I, question is always, weird you know you're too clumsy i'm a little clumsy when it comes to nervousness but yes it was totally fun and i really really love you thank you very much for doing this with me and thank I'm you really so much for inviting me and i'm just to anybody that sees this hi to all my readers i love all my readers <laughs> <laughs> i hope you know i know for sure all the readers love you too thank <laughs> you thank you for writing the book thank you very much have a nice <laughs> evening <laughs> And have a nice morning. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. She is amazing, isn't she? I had a blast talking to her. I was so excited throughout the day. It's actually night here in India and it's morning there in US. So it's night here. So, and you know, all the day I've been jumping and hopping all around the house. 
screaming that, oh my God, I'm talking to Brenda Hyatt. And my sister, she was sitting right next to me when I was yelling this. She stared at me as if we've grown like four to 10 heads. And that was quite embarrassing. But as a bibliophile, it's, as, as I said before, completely justified. Also, Brenda Hyatt is a phenomenal author of the sensational Starstruck series and there are historical fictions as well. So do not forget to check out all those books and I assure you as a bibliophile, as a you know, very passionate reader, you're gonna love all those books. So do not forget to grab your copies right now. This was it for this video. I hope you had fun. If you did, then do not forget to subscribe and continue watching my videos.